Hey guys, it's Gareth also known as Pew Pew Pew, and I'm bringing you week 2 of season 4 of the GPC. Um, this week I'm facing Moldy, also known as the coach of the Wolverham Wolverhampton Wanglers. A uh, link to him will be in the description as always. Uh, quickly going over the team matchup here. Um, he has Azumarill, which just shits on me, pretty much. Uh, it's a very scary threat, and I have to deal with it by using some clever sets, probably. He has Megalatios, which is also quite threatening, but uh, I, I think I have some decent ways to deal with it. Uh, Excadrill is just a non-factor because I have Rotom Mo, and what does it do to it? Like, really. Uh, Rotom Heat, however, can be an issue. Uh, kind of forced into bringing a more like especially defensive end day or something. Uh, Seismitoad is a Seismitoad, you know. Um, I need to cover, have grass coverage on at least one other thing than Rotom Mo to deal with it. Uh, and if he's, uh, is it Ganlon? No, not Ganlon. Um, the grass resist berry, I forget. If he's that, then it could be more of an issue. Um, Jolteon is just a fast electric. Uh, if he specs, it can be quite, quite a big, uh, quite a big threat, but it shouldn't be too bad. Gorgeist I see as a non-factor once more because my most potent physical attacker being Entei and Mega Titar both are super effective against it, so should he bring a physically defensive wall, it wouldn't be Gorgeist. Um, Skuntank, however, is slightly more potent against my team, like a Spadef variant can deal quite well with Latias. Um, it sort of deals with Sylveon. Um, it's just not too bad, so it is a poten uh, potential thing that he could bring. Red Rock, once again, I don't think will be a factor, although he could bring it uh, defensive for Entei and Mega Titar, as I said. And finally, Sork um, could definitely come this week. Uh, I kind of had trouble with fighting types, not too much though, because I have uh, Crobat and Latias. I just have to be wary of the knockoffs and the stone edges and uh, play around it. And uh, sometimes I'll just have to bring a Resist Berry on, uh, on Cobalion to deal with it. So that's the quick te rundown of the teams. I'm sorry if this is faster and a bit less um, a bit less well uh, well said than it normally is. It's just that uh, we battled late last night, late Friday night that is, and I'm recording and editing this the day before I upload. The day, no, the day I upload, and I don't have much time, so... Let's move straight onto the team builder and we can get the ball rolling. See you in a sec. Welcome back. This is the team builder and uh, the team that I brought, obviously. Uh, some of these sets are just as experimental as they were last week, but uh, I think that uh, most of them are justified. Um, this particular spread for Rotom Mo was to take a play rough uh, Aqua Jet combo from a band, baby Bandadazu. I can't remember if it was banded or non banded. I can't remember. I think it was banded because that was the thing I was most afraid of. Um, no, it was definitely from not banded because I could take one play rough with this from a banded Azu, and from a non banded I could take uh, a play rough Aqua Jet combo. That was it. That was what this exact spread was for. I have Willow to obviously burn it. I have Leaf Storm and Volt Switch to hit it super effectively. And I have Dark Pulse just in case he thinks that. Um, uh, Mega Latias, Latios, sorry, is safe. Uh, it's just in case he has it like at a low percentage, and I can just finish it off with this. Next up, we have Asgore, the Cabalion, as always. <coughs> this time, I'm running Chopperberry Magnet Rise because uh, if he does have this was initially Magnet Rise Sword Stance, but uh, I changed it up to be a slightly more bulky set. I I can't remember what the speed was for, but I thought uh, I'll use it more of a as like a half offensive, half defensive pivot kind of thing, uh, with the fact that it can deal decently well with uh, uh, decently well with Azumarill, it doesn't take too much from an Aqua Jet, and it does quite a lot with Iron Head. So um, it's not a bad mod this week. Uh, the Magnet Rise was for Excadrill, as I was saying, because I was going to run Magnet Rise SD to sort of set up, but I changed my mind and I went for a different setup mod this week. Um, Chapelberry was specifically for Sork in case he did bring it, or for uh, Super Power Azu. So that's that's the thought for this one. Max attack because power. Uh, that speed was oh, it's to outspeed something specific. I think it's a base 100 maybe. Uh, what's 
I can't remember what's on his team. I'll have to have a look. Uh, but yeah, that was Dark Speed something in particular. Um, there we go. Next up, we have Shash the Crowbat. Nice to see her making her first appearance. Uh, Brave Bird U turn, Roost and Defog. Uh, I needed a Defogger this week, and I was running more of an offensive Latias set, so I had to bring Shash. Um, Roost, because recovery is good. Brave Bird for stab damage and U turn for momentum switch up, you know me. Um, spread is just max pull, max HP. Uh, 220 speed was to outspeed, I think max speed jolly. Uh, yeah. Max Speed Jolly, Mega Latias, because mine is Max Speed Jolly, so. Latio, sorry. Mine is Max Speed Jolly, and it's the same base speed, so. That's the exact speed investment, because it's his fastest mod, if I remember right. Uh, max uh, the rest of the attack and adamant, because why not? Then we have Latias, uh, fully offensive this week. Uh, it does a lot of work to his team. Draco Meteor, obviously, for the Latios. Energy Ball for uh, Azu and Seismitoad. Uh, it could, uh, uh, yeah, recover for recovery, and Surf was for Excadrill. Uh, I pretty much hit most of his team super effectively, and if I don't, then I just pop a Draco on it, and it takes at least half his HP. Uh, what's going on right now? Chrome, please. Chrome, please. Alright, I'll just have to pause this until Chrome starts... Oh, no, there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, here is the setup mod and sort of win con that I had in mind. If you didn't bring Sork, I just straight up won with this. Um, but uh, Sork was definitely a good bring this week, so... It, it was sort of like a 50-50. And I thought to myself, I want to try it, might as well. I have sub D-Dance, Crunch and Stone Edge. At plus one, uh, Stone Edge is a no-co on most Azure sets. Um, Crunch the Noko on defensive Latias at plus one. Um, at plus two, I think it needs to be to Crunch Oko, uh, Seismitoad. Basically, if I get to plus one, I can take a single, and I'm behind a sub, for example, I can take a single hit from literally anything, and then just destroy it. Run through his team. That's the plan, at least. Um, it's just a matter of getting it in at the right time, and trying to find a way to, uh, to, to, uh, to deal with it accordingly. And finally, we have a bit of a weird set. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a very strange set. Uh, Toxic, Raw, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed with Pasho Berry on Inte. Uh, Pasho was to take... Uh, I can take a Waterfall with it. Try and get a Sacred Fire burn. Um, or if he's Belly Drum, I can't... I don't think I can take an Aqua Jet. No, I can't take an Aqua Jet. Um... Uh, Raw was, in case he had Carmine Latias and he starts setting him in my face thinking I don't have anything for him. Which is always possible. Uh, Sacrifice because Thurb, Extreme Speed because Priority. Uh, I was going to go fully especially defensive with a positive nature, but because I have the Extreme Speed I have to be adamant, so... Uh, it didn't take the hits quite as well as it could have, but that's what it was there for initially. Just to, just to sort of work as a bulky... Just a bulk... thing. <laughs> On that note, uh, that's my team. I think it deals pretty well with uh, the two main threats, which are Azu and Megalatias. As again, Excadrill, which is his other big threat, doesn't do too much to me, so. Um, hopefully, uh, you can see my thought process going on here and why I brought what I did. I was so close to bringing. Uh, uh, assault Vest, Mirror Coat, Glaceon, uh, instead of where NT is now, but I decided against it. Glaceon's day will come at some point, um, and you will all see how valuable, how, uh, not valuable, uh, viable she is. Until then, I'll see you in the battle. So these are the teams that were brought. As you can see, um, I haven't made any changes there. Uh, he brought Azu, uh, Megalatias, and Rotom Heat, which were the two big threats that I uh, was most afraid of. Uh, but I can deal with all of them with the team that I brought. Uh, Sork, however, is quite an issue if it's uh, if it's either Scarfed or 
or uh, not banded, in other words, because a slow band I can deal with. A scarf is kind of annoying, but uh, any other variant can catch me off guard. Seismitoad is pretty much a non-factor because I have the oops, I have the energy ball on Matthias and I have Rotom uh, Rotom Mo, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, Jolteon I have Rotom Mo for, and aside from that, it's pretty much Entei or Tyranitar as the switch-ins, or even Latias if it's if it's decently healthy. So I, I can sort of deal with it. It's just going to be uh, a pain to play around with. Without further ado, let's just hop straight in, and I believe I lead off with Latias, if I remember right, I can't remember. Um, yes, I lead off with Latias as he leads off with Jolteon. I know the Vault Switch is coming, now it's just a matter of predicting what he, go what he goes into. I go for the Energy Ball thinking he'll go into as a predicting a Dragon move, and he goes straight out into Rotom Heat, so that shows to me maybe he's more of a, a defensive set. He doesn't take too much from it, and he shows the lefties. Um, but from that damage, he's not fully specially defensive. Uh, he might He's definitely a bulkier spread though. So that didn't do too much. I kind of have to switch out at this point. I don't want to get burned because I don't want it wearing down with the life hub. He shows sub. And here I'm thinking to myself, this is maybe sub split. Uh, something like that. So I just want to roar it out. Don't want to deal with it. I don't have too much to hit this otherwise. So with Entei at least. And this is my just my general switching because it doesn't take too much. He gets a crit, which is unfortunate. but. I roll it out, and he gets rolled out into Sork, which is pretty bad of a matchup for me. Son of a bitch! Uh, now it's just a matter of predicting which move uh, he's going to go for. Here I think to myself, he'll probably go for the Earthquake, because it hits uh, 3 out of 4 things on... Uh, no, yeah, it's 3 out of 4 things on my team. Uh, and uh, I didn't even look at it, but I thought he was more Breaker, so I, I, I go straight out into my sort of defensive Rotom Mo. Because uh, I don't have much else to switch in on this. He, the close combat hits, and here I think to myself, uh, he wouldn't have stayed in on an Entei if he wasn't scarfed. Because my Entei could have been speed invested. I get it. I don't get it. Um, so at this point, I'm pretty certain this is scarfed, but I, I'm still unsure. He could have been playing a bit ballsy or bluffing it. So I got into Crobat here. Close combat's again, which shows he is choice at least in some way. Um, I believe I just go for the U-turn here, predicting the Rotom Heat. There we go. And now I can just go straight into Latias and Oko with uh, Draco Meteor. So, lovely animation now too. There we go. Dead Rotom Heat. And, uh, yeah. Oh, majestic! I'm happy that's gone. Now he goes out into Latios. And, uh, here I'm scared of either the Calm Mind or just the Dragon Move. Once again, my designated uh, sort of way to deal with this is, uh, is Entei. In fact, if I was at full health and he wasn't at max special attack, I could have taken that, but unfortunately those weren't the case. And I can just uh, switch back into that, yes, and I'll go straight away with Draco Meteor. What I should have done there is gone into Titar and set up a sub, and then Dragon Danced, and maybe even swept his team at that point. But what can you do? Um, this just means that Latias picks up yet another kill. That's two for Latias so far. Uh, he brings out Azumarill, I don't want to stay in on this. I just go straight out into Trim Scrotum, just let it drop. At this point, I don't really need it. Uh, here, I'm assuming he's banded. So, I go straight out into Crobat, and uh, he switches out, which which means, in my head, he's either banded or he doesn't want to take a hit. So, I just go straight for the Brave Bird. It doesn't do too much to this side, but it does a decent amount. Uh, still unsure of his spread at this moment. So, I go for a U-turn here, and uh, I go straight out into Latias, that's right. As he scores, gets the burn, not too much of a problem. It's annoying because I have life orb and now the burn wearing me down, but what can you do? Scald is basically a 50 50 anyway. I recover up, uh, expecting him to stay in to try and kill me off. Uh, I, and he brings it straight out Azu, so I, I switch out, I don't want to deal with it. He goes for Ice Punch, which I'm genuinely surprised by. I don't know why he didn't go for play rough at that point. Uh, I guess he was predicting uh, Crobat. But I set up my rocks with Asgore and then switch straight out to Latias if I remember. Yep, as he goes for Stealth Rocks, and here I have no reason not to. Energy Ball hits everything on his team, uh, either super effectively or just uh, neutrally. Take down the Seismitoad, and here he brings out Sork, and I'm thinking to myself, this he, he, either he's bluffing the Scarf at this point or he is Scarfed. And here I think to myself, he's going, if he's going for CC, I don't want to switch it straight out into, uh, into Kabalion. What I should have done is gone straight out into Kabalion in hindsight, but. Here I stay in as he goes for the knockoff and kills this off, so I believe I go out into Tyranitar at this point, yep. And I take this opportunity to set up a sub as he goes straight out into Azumarill. 
uh, I set up a sub. If I'd have D-danced there, this was GG, but <laughs> no, I, said, I wanted to be greedy. Uh, Stone Edge does a whole lot of damage, and he waterfalls, and here, I, he's going to die to Sandstorm anyway, but here I'm just going to crunch, and he shows the Aqua Jet, so he's not uh, banded. I'm guessing he was AV. I don't know, we never got to see him get hit by a special attack, so there's no way of telling. Here I stay in thinking, if you vault, I can definitely live a vault switch if it's, uh, I can't remember if I can live a vault, I can live a life or vault switch, I know that, I can't remember if I can live a, a life or uh, choice specs vault switch, but he stays and goes for the T-bolt and that takes me out, uh, I have no other choice but to go into Kerbalion at this point, and I go for a sacred sword I believe, and this is where the mind games begin, um, in his mind he's thinking, I CC here, this is dead. All he has left is a Crobat, I have the Jolteon, I win. His other play is to go for a Stone Edge, but if he needs to switch, switch out into Crobat, and if he does kill it, he wins. If he switch, uh, he could also double out into Jolteon, predicting the Crobat switch. If he does that and I switch out, he wins. He's got two chances to win if I switch out to Crobat, I have two chances to win if I stay in. So we both make the uh, more the more mathemati mathematically probable winning play. I stay in, he switches out, and I go for a Sacred Sword. He doubles out, as I said. This gets Elko by Sacred Sword, and at this point, it's it's just GG. <laughs> that scar so he's either locking himself into stone edge or close to combat at this point um, either way this will live either one because of the chopper berry and if he even if I wasn't he would have close combat and would have jackal to crowbat so as go gets a little bit of late game cleanup right there gets a crit crit mattered I'm, I'm mad about that please please hacks <laughs> yeah um, yeah that was a f actually a fantastic battle uh, it was so end-to-end -end, uh, during the whole game. Uh, Mega Latias, when I switched in Entei and it killed me, I started thinking this might be a problem if he did switch out when I sent in Latias. Thankfully he didn't, and uh, yeah. That was uh, quite the scary match. It, I literally was on edge all the way through. Um, it was a wonderful game to play, and it was a wonderful game to be a part of. I'm very glad that uh, that I ended up pulling through in the end, though. Uh, yeah. So this week, uh, my MVP has to be Latias, picking up three very important kills on his Latias, his Rotom Heat, and his Seismitoad, two of the three big threats to my team. I could have given it to Cobalion because of that end game bit there, but no. Uh, Kabayon went 2-0, and oh, Latias went 3-1, and one, and the other kill went to Mega Tyra and Tyra, of course. Crobat making its debut, doing literally nothing except for that like 30% size of Toad. Fantastic. And gaining some momentum with you too. Uh, Entei just died off, as did Rotomo, so... Overall, this week was a decent performance for all my Mons. Now, on my team page itself, all of my Mons are either... Uh, either equal differential or however you say, you know, they've got as many deaths as they do kills, all positive. So everything that I brought so far has put in the work. Also, uh, all the games have been played this week and I am now sitting pretty in the top place, but only the two only people who are undefeated are me and Bluesy, the the crime fighting duo that, that will live on till the end of times. Uh, <laughs> Bluesy's lovely. Uh, if you don't know who he is, just go check him out. Um, we're the only two undefeated teams at this point. I have plus six differential. I think he has plus three, plus four. I forget. It's it's a, he he had two very close games, so I can't remember if it's plus. It might be plus four because he won 3-0 first week. Or was it for two zero? He won three zero or two zero, and then he won one zero this week. I highly recommend watching those matches because they were very close games. Um, so sitting in first place, it's a feeling that I'm not all too familiar with, but I'm I'm glad to be here now. You get so used to playing at such a high level and a, just a high playing field in general that it just feels weird going back into the real world. 
it's kind of like you're in you're in a whole different dimension you know a level of gameplay that's beyond normal recognition um, hopefully I can continue on with this winning form next week I face again, up against Lion I haven't looked at the team matchup yet so I don't know but uh, if my playstyle continues to, to work like it has so far I, I think I can definitely win next week um, and I'm looking forward to it so on that note I will see you all next week thank you for watching and, uh, and, uh, and all that and more importantly, don't forget to conversion to that subscribe button. Uh, I'm starting this now, where um, where I uh, just uh, I just start doing uh, random moves at the end of a, of, a, of a thing for the subscribe button. You know, people like doing the wood hammer, the like button, whatever. Something that sort of makes sense. No, I'm just conversion toing it, baby. Conversion to. Um, on that note, this was PewDiePie. See what I did there, PewDiePie. Uh, thanks Matt for the idea of that and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye bye